Hey guys, it's Aubrey here with Erie Motorsports and Cora. You say hi, Cora. Hi. And uh, I got a few different projects going on right now, so I'll show you them real quick. And then there's, uh, I'm gonna do a video. I just realized that there's no videos on YouTube of my old hauling truck. Um, I built a uh, 3500 um, Dodge Cummins and it was a P-pumped 24 valve with compounds on it and I put a 10-speed uh, transmission in it and I don't have any video of that but I do have a, um, a bunch of photos so I'll show you some photos and uh, do a voiceover so you can kind of see how that went together um, so it was a 10-speed out of a tractor trailer uh, a Eaton Road Ranger with the MP205 divorce transfer case so it still had four-wheel drive um, and uh, I put that in there because I kept eating up the NV5600 transmissions. So we'll go through all that and I'll show you what else I'm working on here. So I'm going to do some work on the back of my race car here. Um, I'm actually going to um, cut this out and pull. This is my power steering pump. Um, and you can see it's actually got a deleted vacuum pump. So typically there would be a vacuum pump here. I deleted that because I didn't need the vacuum pump. Um, and it was one more thing to go wrong. But I'm not getting the performance that I want out of my power steering pump. Um, and I want to be able to lower this engine about three or four inches. So you can see right here, that dent right there is where my upper link hit. Um, I think it was when my mount was busted off. So it doesn't usually hit. It had enough clearance. But when the mount was busted off, it was low enough to hit. But with this case cut out of here and I'll obviously weld a piece back in there um, I'll have enough clearance to drop this engine down um, then I'll mount my power steering pump I think I'm gonna mount it up here um, but I'm getting one uh, that's gonna be belt driven and that'll give me I'll be able to overdrive a little bit too because the Cummins isn't gonna have the RPM swing that like a gasser would so instead of going from like 800 to 8,000 RPM, this thing's gonna be running from 800 to like, you know, 3,200. It's got a 4K governor spring kit, so it's supposed to rev out to 4,000, but realistically, it really maxes out about 3,200. So, um, then I'll have to build a custom oil pan, because as you can see here, my oil pan is as low as I can get it. So, um, I think I'm gonna try and do a center sump and I'm gonna make it shallower, and I'm going to put um, baffles and trap doors in it so that it can uh, um, gather all that oil and keep it in there. I also have a accu sump on this too, which helps a little bit, but I wanna do my best to keep it from needing it. So uh, that'll be a heck of a project because I'll have to cut off the whole back end of the frame here um, to probably right here and weld in new framework. I'll have to redo the engine mounts because I'm doing a center sump, so that's gonna go right where the engine mounts are. Um, and uh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a bit of work, but it should be worth it. If I can get that down two or three inches, it's gonna make it handle a whole lot better and it's gonna improve my power steering too. Um, so then real quick, Here's the other project that I have going on, which I'll, I'll be doing videos on both of these when I get them done, but it's going to take a little while. This is my um, belt grinder. So this is, uh, this is going to be um, as simple as I, can, as I can make it. So it's not going to be one where you can swap out um, wheels or, you know, do any of that kind of stuff but it's gonna, this platen is gonna go right here between those two and my um, tensioner wheel is gonna go right about in there. I'm gonna have to make a me mechanism for it so I can tension it and adjust the tracking. Um, and then this whole, this whole unit is gonna rotate uh, 180 degrees so I can run it vertical and I'll have a I'll have a horizontal table here so I can run it vertical I can roll it flat and use that flat platen to do nice straight edges and then I can roll it up and I can use the other wheel um, 
And so I wanted to have something that I would have to adjust as little as possible. I don't want to have to swap out wheels or, you know, do any of that kind of stuff. It's going to have a, it's got a three phase motor with a variable frequency drive. So it'll go both directions. Um, so should be pretty slick. Anyways, um, I'll show you the, uh, the Road Ranger build. All right, guys. So this is Frank. Um, here I am just hauling home U-Haul uh, um, for the box I wanted to be able to put on my trailer when I wanted to haul stuff covered or, you know, go camp and whatnot. Um, so this is the load that uh, blew up my first transmission. Um, the transmissions that was in this truck, it was a six-speed NV5600 transmission. The truck was P-pumped, 24-valve uh, with compound turbos, and I had propane injection on it. And then I had, um, after I did this build, I did a auto leveling air ride in it and uh, track bars. Um, so I got the Eaton Road Ranger transmission out of a tractor trailer. And then I had to figure out how to adapt it. I decided that I was going to adapt an NV4500 um, bell housing to the transmission rather than using an SAE adapter. You can get SAE adapters that will adapt this transmission to um, the uh, um, Cummins, but the, uh, the bell housings are bigger on those, and most of them have the starter on the right-hand side, which interfered with my compound turbos. So I decided I was going to build my own adapter plate. Um, I was going to use the MV4500 um, bell housing, and then I had to figure out how to hook up the hydraulic clutch. So I found a um, concentric throwout bearing um, that was used in some Mercedes and some Freightliners, um, and they were really expensive. I think they were like they wanted like seven hundred bucks for them. Uh, but there was a, a surplus company down in Philadelphia somewhere that had these things for like I think they were under a hundred bucks a piece. Um, they were super cheap. So I bought one of those and I got a inch and three quarters input shaft for the transmission. So I swapped out the input shaft and the transmission and, um, <clears throat> and made this adapter to fit that throw out bearing here. I am testing it on just a random clutch. I had laying around making sure that I had enough flow. I ended up needing to get a Willwood um, brake cylinder, like the largest diameter one I could find to make it work and I had to cut these out a little bit to make it so that the shaft would fit through there. Um, this is the adapter for the Will Wood um, master cylinder and uh, luckily South Bend was the one that made my clutch. They were willing to send me new clutch discs so I could use my existing pressure plate. There's the Will Wood master cylinder installed and here I made an arch to go inside the truck and put a winch on it so I could lift it up into place. Um, I had to make a mount for this transmission that went over top of it because um, the if I went underneath it, it was going to interfere with the drive shaft coming from the divorced transfer case. So got a little rubber isolation there, built this thing up really nice and rugged. It's all, uh, I think it was one inch steel. Um, there it is, held up in place, and um, really easy, actually, to install with that winch. You know, you could just winch it right up in there. It was held in place, get it bolted up. Had a lot of uh, grinding and welding here and that inside the cab to get that uh, transmission tunnel where I wanted it. And then here I'm tearing the NV, uh, I'm sorry, the NP205 transfer case apart. Um, this is one of the divorce style transfer cases out of, uh, maybe it was a Ford. I can't remember. Um, and I, uh, put the, um, they make some pins for these that make it so that you can put it in front wheel drive only as well. Um, which, uh, came in handy a few times. So this was the adapter plate for the, um, transfer case. And I decided to go over top with that too. And there's everything mounted up in place. 
building some drive shafts. I just took the, uh, when I bought the transmission, I asked for the drive shaft that was in it as well. So I just took that whole drive shaft and shortened it down and adapted it to the um, uh, transfer case. So, I mean, this thing last, I ran it for several years before I finally sold it. There's the oil cooler. And I had zero problems with the transmission. Um, it just ran great. The only thing that ever happened was one t point there was a, um, there was an elbow that wore through and it was leaking some air. And I had to replace that. There it is with it installed. I wasn't uh, using this truck for chauffeur and people around. So, <clears throat> it's a little bit... Uh, rough and dirty but um, it got the job done I put a air ride seat out of that same tractor trailer in it while I was at it and um, it was uh, it was a heck of a truck it's nothing like um, drifting a uh, 10 speed around some country roads so this is the air system had to build an air system for it obviously this is a desk and air dryer because I didn't want to put a full on tractor trailer air dryer in there and there's my tank um and uh, luckily i already had a nice box on the truck that this fit right into um and just cut a hole in the bottom of the box and put a bolt through that little tab there so i could reach up in there and drain the water out of it when i needed to there's the uh, jake brake there's a whole air system installed with the air dryer and here's the next uh, thing to go bad was uh, blew out the rear end. Um, I was about four hours away from home and had to limp back uh, using front wheel drive. So, um, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. All right, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I sold Frank about five years ago. It was uh, just time. It was time to upgrade. I went to a tractor trailer and... Um, you know, I needed something that was working for me instead of me working for it. Um, had a lot of fun building that truck and, and uh, you know, I did all kinds of stuff to it. I didn't even get to a lot of it in the video, but um, it was a fun project. And uh, I sold it to a guy who's taking good care of it. Every now and then he contacts me, but it's been a while. So hopefully it's still up and running good. Maybe you'll see this video. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe for, um, you know, future videos and content. See ya.